Tis the season to be picky. Come check out our newly released winter and holiday collection over on Creator Inc. These include a ceramic mug featuring a cozy Bernie and penguin, a super soft fleece blanket, and three penguin themed ceramic ornaments. All artwork for these items has been done by the delightful Bobby Big Potatoes, the original artist of the Picky Penguin, who I'm so thrilled to have working with us. Just like the desk pad and notebook, these items are made to order and will ship to you shortly after ordering. We spent a long time putting these designs together, and I know you penguins will love these items just as much as we enjoy creating them. Check the link in the description or YouTube's merch shelf and order yours today. Previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Well, we're not going home empty handed. And I wouldn't dream of sending you packing with not with a knot, Kimma. Here, take a handcuff to two. Oh, well, it would be rude to say no. Wouldn't want to become an anemic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already liking this running gag. And now back to legging it, people. Hello! The sneak of B. Back with some more of the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. When we last left off. Oh my God, this game's so freaking good. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm a little bit ahead of myself because I'm actually technically haven't even, I mean, last episode was great, but it gets even better this episode, okay? This is where real stuff starts to get really freaking crazy. And things happen and revelations are made and I just, I just, oh my God, this game's awesome. <laughs> this game's so good, uh, but uh, last episode, we did get told about the Asogi papers, uh, i.e. Asogi's last will and testament, but seemingly we don't really have any, like, like there's nothing in there from the get-go that we're looking that really seems to help us. At least not at the moment. I was kind of expecting some big revelation, which kind of leads me to believe that this is probably like the incomplete papers, or it is completely forged and the real papers are somewhere else. It does seem like Governor uh, Caden, though, knows some shit. A piece of crap. He's in on this shit. I know it. I freaking know it. By the way, you guys did also point out. So apparently, Sogi bringing up his sword, right? Karama. That name got adopted as one of the surnames of one of his father's disciples. That indicates potentially uh, the uh, origins behind uh, the Karma bloodline, uh, like the Karma's ancestors. Holy shit, the Von Karmas. Wow. That's kind of cool. That's a that's a nice little nod. And it's all just because the sword was so badass. They just had to call themselves that. Minus the U. Oh, and apparently uh, the phrase just desserts, the spelling there was actually right. I did not know this. Um, there is actually another uh, version of that word, uh, dessert, but it's not spelled with an extra S and it's actually the noun form of uh, deserve. And it's actually like the noun form of deserve, and it means like the deserved reward or punishment for something. Ah, I did not know that. I have legit for like the decades that I've I've heard, known and heard of that phrase, always thought it was literally like referring to dessert, <laughs> like consuming dessert. Those just desserts. It's just a saying for some reason, but I guess that makes a bit more sense. Good on them then. I definitely wouldn't have caught that in the in the QA process. Uh, but anyway, last episode, uh, Miyuki2319 said, uh, This game in a nutshell, any character. I have this deep, dark secret that I've been keeping safe for years, but it's affecting me horribly. Ryunosuke, I'll tell you about it, but only in the strictest confidence. Please don't tell anyone. Ryunosuke, okay, I got it. I won't tell anyone. Five minutes later. Hey, everyone, you'll never guess the crazy thing I just heard. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was a little mipped by that. <laughs> He's just like, the guy's like, whatever you do, please don't tell anybody about what I just told you. And he immediately goes to Governor Caden and asks him about it. I like Governor Caden's like, who told you about this? And we're like, we can't tell you. I'm surprised he didn't just go, it was fucking vigil, wasn't it? <laughs> Cause come on, I mean like, I feel like the list of people that would have told me that is kind of small. So <laughs> I feel like he probably could have pieced that together pretty well, but whatever. What's he gonna do about it, huh? Hopefully he's not like some secret assassin. Thankfully those don't seem to exist anywhere in this world, right? Right? Uh, but uh, Miyuki, thank you so much for your hilariously accurate comment. It is that reason you are comment of the day. All right, guys. So here we go. This is the remainder of this investigation se section and it starts to get freaking crazy. Take it away, Pastigo. All right, to the forensic laboratory. Holy shit, she's dicked it on all her creepy memorabilia. November 2nd, Forensic Laboratory. This place really is creepy, isn't it? Well, being a dead room, it's probably full of the spirits that it's dissected. But actually, 
There's a rather pl pleasing scent of roses in the air. Well, being a dead realm, the gorilla probably needs a bold scent like that to mask the odor of death. Um, Iris, do you think we could change the subject? Oh, why? Well, I like talking about it, though. Ah, shit. We all about to demon die it. What? What was that? Oh, shit, she's gonna cut us. She's gonna cut us so good. Miss Crazy Pants. Uh, Dr. Gory? What? Um, that noise before. It was sharpening my tools. I'd be dead meat if I didn't keep a perfectly keen edge on them. R right. When following the collagen fibers in the dermis, an expertly sharpened scalpel cuts like cheese. Would you like a demonstration? Oh, yes, please. I'd love to see. <laughs> no. Then I think you'll do nicely. Ha no. No, I wouldn't do nicely at all. I mean, maybe some other time. Is that Tut? Well, we came here to ask questions, so... Doop, 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 doop. Hey, look. Look at the thing. Um, could I ask your opinion about this? Don't forget. You're responsible for putting my mama in jail. Why should I help you? Okay, well, uh, fair enough. Time of death. Um, we have actually met before. I'm a lawyer, if you remember. You're not dead yet. What? So Mama said I wasn't to cut you open. She's so strict about things like that. Well, good. Dr. Scythe has some scruples, at least. Oh, dear. It looks like she's not interested in talking to us. For the time being, anyway. For the time being? You mean, until we die? That's a way off. She big hungry. Sorry, but I wasn't planning on dying anytime soon. Tch. Surely there's some less drastic way of making her listen. Fine. Be that way. Uh, Dr. Gory, we actually came here to ask you about this. It was very good. Good? Sorry? Your skin didn't stain my blade once. And very little mess. His joints dislocated easily, and his muscle tissue was a pleasure to work with. We can skip those details. But there is one thing about the report that's caught my attention. You don't seem to have recorded a time of death. Oh! That's not my fault. Oh! That made me jump. You have a face after all. And please... Tell us what happened. So, why doesn't this autopsy report include the victim's time of death then? It's really the most crucial detail that we could have really fucking used. I was told not to write it. What? By whom? Mayor Strongheart, the Lord Chief Justice. He came here. Lord Strongheart came? He said that from the witness statements about the gunshot and the other evidence, it was obvious. The man clearly died at 5 p.m. on 1st November when the gunshot was heard. But that's not the time of death you wrote on the report. You didn't write anything. Was there some reason you didn't include it? Dr. Gory, if you're hiding something under Lord Strongheart's instructions, and sooner or later, you're going to go the same way as your mother. Give it here, then. Huh? She's scribbling so furiously. There. You, you've written... What? What's she written? Tell us! Indeterminate. Great. But... According to the coroner, Dr. Gory, an accurate estimation of the time of death is not possible. Mind elaborating? What do you mean by that? Why was the time of death indeterminate? 
When the specimen was brought in, it was still fresh. So the time of death could easily have coincided with when the gunshot was heard. But there was one small discrepancy. What discrepancy? There was some fresh fried fish in the pocket of the specimen's overcoat. And that fish had started to rot. What? If the victim liked fried fish, he presumed he liked to eat it before it went off. Well, yes. What are you really trying to say? It's possible that someone tried to manipulate the apparent time of death. Manipulate? Th Is that even possible to do? Theoretically. If you were to chill the body in ice, you could delay the onset of putrefaction. And if the overcoat wasn't on the body at the time, then only the fish would have started to rot. And then today's science is not yet possible to determine if the body was chilled or not. But today's science isn't advanced enough to let you freeze a corpse, it seems. Mmm. But surely, to chill a corpse like that would require an enormous amount, enormous electrical refrigerator. And I don't imagine many households in London are equipped with such a device. No, definitely not. But maybe in a factory or some other special pla places. Or maybe just outside, because it's always fucking cold here. I don't recall seeing any factories or such like on Fresno Street, though. I wonder if the inspector's body had been chilled somehow. And what the, might the actual time of death have been? I couldn't say for sure. But at the most, it might have been a day earlier. No! In other words, it would corroborate your previous deduction, Mr. Narahodo. The Inspector Gregson was killed a day before his body was discovered. At a different location. Did you inform Lord Strongheart of this possibility? He simply said that there were no electrical refrigerators of that size in the vicinity. Hmm. He's covering some shit up. Oh, yes. One other thing. It's something the governor of Barkley Prison told us. He said that your mother, Dr. Scythe, was responsible for confirming the death of the professor after his execution. The professor... Apparently, you always enjoyed listening to your mother's stories about her work, so we were wondering if you might know something about what happened 10 years ago. That's not all Mama did. Sorry? My Mama carried out the autopsy of Cliff Van Zeeks as well. What? Really? The brother of Lord Van Zeeks, the professor's final victim. Ah. The idea of carrying out an autopsy on a member of the aristocracy was completely unthinkable back then. But the detective in charge of the investigation insisted, and it was miraculously authorized. That detective being Inspector Gregson, of course. Quite an accomplishment for one man. That autopsy provided the vital clue needed to arrest the killer. And Mama was there for that historic event. And what does all this mean? You know, that amazing autopsy happened right here in this very room. The professor and Clint Van Zeeks. They both spent their final moments before the bay on that dissection table there. So this lab, Mama's lab, was instrumental in some way of the country's most important events. She really is proud of her mother. I wonder if you tell us more about exactly what happened back then, Dr. Gory. Maybe? Confirmation of death. The professor's execution was Mama's first big case. She had to be in attendance at Barclay's prison execution chamber and sign the certificate to confirm the convict's death. Mama is the best corner in the world, you know. I was so proud of her. But the execution didn't actually take place. No. And worse still, Mama actually helped with the jailbreak. I didn't want to know. Oh dear. You found out recently, you mean? I believed in her. And Mama. But... Now I wonder if I'm starting down the same path as her. You mean, because you admitted the time of death on this autopsy report. But that's because Lord Strongheart forbade you from including it. Just like Mama. I'm sure she was coerced by somebody too. Yes. That's my feeling as well. Hmm. There's no doubt that there were powerful forces at play ten years ago. The execution couldn't have been staged 
without a lot of people at the prison knowing about it. Obviously, the prison governor must have been in on it as well. The big man with the little handcuffs, according to what he told us, he was tricked by the chief warder. He says he knew nothing about it. Of course he said that. I'd say the same thing. She was behind that jailbreak all those years ago. Mmm. Wow, the plot fucking thickens, dude. Holy shit. Clint's autopsy. You mentioned the autopsy of Clint Van Zeeks. It was at a time when carrying out autopsies of murder victims was very unusual. It's still not a practice that observe, is observed in our country, even now. It turned out that he was the professor's final victim, and when the autopsy was performed, Mama was present, although only as the secondary assistant. The person leading the procedure was called Dr. John H. Watson. Uh-oh. That's right, my daddy! Uh, well, okay, well, there you go. And there was one other person present, the primary assistant. He was a visiting student from the Far East. Wait, a visiting student? Her father? It must have been my father, Yushin Mikotoba. I had no idea Professor Mikotoba had been involved in something so important. But the outcome of that historic autopsy was the discovery of a final piece of evidence that led to the capture of the professor. So that's how they came to identify Genshin Asoki as the infamous mass murderer. I wonder what it was. What was that vital piece of evidence? Do you happen to know anything about that piece of evidence? Can you tell us any more? Would you like to see the records for yourself? What? Would, would that be all right, please? What's the point of keeping records if people can't look at them? The fair final defeat at the back of those cupboards with the other records from the last decade. Thank you. Sick. Surprisingly more cooperative than I was expecting. Let's see. Van Zeeks? Van Zeeks? Um, that's strange. What, Mr. Naruhoto? They aren't here. There's nothing under Van Zeeks. There must be. Perhaps somebody took them away? No. No one's allowed to take documents related to the professor case out of this room. But you're right. They're gone. Well, when was the last time somebody looked at them? Do you remember? It was. Oh, yes. I remember now. It was two years ago. The consultant detective came one day, saying that he'd like to see the records. No. Y you don't mean... Sherlock Holmes was his name. Deep down, I knew that was coming. Do you think... He stole the records. Wait, 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 wait. When was this? Two years ago. Oh. Oh, fuck. We always knew that Holmes has known some shit, right? Oh, no, surely not. Iris, that can't be, right? Can it? Iris? Uh-oh. now I hope you don't mind but what is it Iris I just remember something very important I have to do I'm going to have to leave you now and shoot Holmes with my gun oh, this is very sudden Iris well we'll come with you then oh no 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 there's no need you and Renault take your time you take your time here bye for now then good luck Wait a minute, little girl. Um, me? Oh, my thief is back again. I remember now. You've been here before, haven't you? Was she with him? Have you, Iris? Yes, two years ago, when that detective came. You were there with him, weren't you? You were a living specimen then, too. That's the way it usually works, yes. Was I? I? I really don't remember. Anyway, sorry. But a mustache. Wait, Iris. I'll rub a butt for when you get home. And I won't be there. Bye. What's the matter with her? She's behaving really strangely all of a sudden.
Well, in that case, we won't keep you any longer either. It's been quite a while since I had visits. This was really fun. But next time you come, I prefer it if you're ready for the section. I can't make any promises, sorry. It's a bit strange that the records of Clint Van Zeke's autopsy have disappeared. But I think we've asked all we came to ask now. Hmm. Just <laughs> sitting over in a little chair. Let's have a closer look at this. <laughs> then again, let's not. At least, not while she's armed. She's got her funny little dolls. Ah, she won't let me look at her dolls. No. Or actually, she won't let me look at anything. That's the point. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, now what do I do? Oh, the Fresno Serum. Okay. Okay. Uh, November 2nd, room on Fresno Street. Is Holmes going to be in here? I feel like he probably will be. Or he's probably going to pop out at some point. Police are still busily investigating in here then. But she is nowhere to be seen. Where is she? Yes, it has been blissfully quiet, hasn't it? But perhaps she's out investigating on her own, practicing what her boss taught her. Well, I expect she'll be back before too long. Shall we wait? Actually... There's something different about this room since I last we were here, isn't there? We could always use the time to investigate more thoroughly. Is this a stool? A stool with a weird mark on it? It's a weird br Oh, I guess not. I guess maybe this? This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? Oh, it appears to be made of metal. It must be very heavy. I wonder to whom it belongs. Holmes pops out of it. There's some initials on the outs on the outside. Look, T G. Let's ask one of the policemen if they know how it came to be here. Oi! What do you think you're doing? I Miss mean, Tobias Gregson's box, right? That's my trunk. That is. As off. Gina. But where were you hiding? I don't know. You leave something on the tin for a few seconds. And every Tom, Dick, and Harry has got those greedy eyes on it. Just a wild guess, Gina, but... What? Spit it out, Odo! Is it fair to say that you've only owned that trunk since this morning's trial? What? What are you trying to say? Come on! This trunk goes with me everywhere! Always ask! Where you been the last year? Try not to incur your wrath, mainly. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, Gina! What the frickin' fruity fuck? Wait, 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 wait. You should hear them talking at the yard now. They should be ashamed of themselves. They're saying that it was the boss who killed all them bludgers. Ah, you mean the whole Reaper thing? Yeah. Okay, so word has spread around about that. Interesting. How, how did they find out about it? I only heard that from Van Zeeks, right? Apparently the boss was investigating stuff that no one else at the yard knew nothing about. Maybe Strongheart? Stuff to do with all them criminals will go off school free. Yes, the ones prosecuted by Lord Van Seeks used bribery and corruption to evade conviction. Well, then obviously, it was that blooming Reaper giving the orders, wasn't it? But why would people be suspecting Inspector Gregson of being involved in the killings? There was a notebook hidden in his office. Oh, no. This doesn't sound good. It had details about all the crimes that had been pegged as a Reaper's work. What? No. Did you see it, Gina? Did you see that notebook? They wouldn't flip and let me. Because I'm just an apprentice, apparently. But it was me who found it. And he was my boss. That's right. I was pretty miffed about it, so. Oh, she, she fucking snag it? I'll stick to Peter what it said anyway. Oh. That's her Gina. <laughs> I thought she might have just stolen it. The sacred notebook. So, you managed to see what was written in Gregson's secret notebook anyway, did you? Wait, I see it. It's my right to read what he wrote. And what had he written, Gina? Dates, times, places, names, and a whole long list of them. The whole details about the bludger are supposed to have been done in by the Reaper. But there could be an explanation for that. Perhaps there's a record of the inspector's investigations into the Reaper's activities. That's what I was thinking it was. 
Exactly. That's what I said. That's the first thing you think, right? As it ha happens, it was full of names I recognized anyway. Well, the Reaper Stars were almost exclusively known leaders of London's criminal underworld. Well, yeah, but there was one name right at the end that was a bit odd. At the end of the list, you mean? I'm pretty sure the date against it was the 31st October. Oh, the day before the inspector was found dead. So, what was the odd name? It wasn't like a name I'd ever seen before. It was something like, um... Nah, it's no good. I can't remember it. Yeah, I don't think it was an English name. Put it that way. By the way, you guys also point out the, uh, the, the pun, right, of Asa Shin is not Asian. It's assassin. Ah, <laughs> holy shit. Well, that makes a lot more sense. Oh, dear. What a pity. There was something else, too. I don't know if it matters, but the same name kept coming up over and over. Shin. It was. Uh. Don't suppose it means anything, but... Did you say Shin? Eh? What? It does mean something! More Fancy knew the name too. He mentioned her as well. The woman who actually did the deeds. And now we find out her name appeared in Grex's secret notebook. We haven't seen you for a little while, have we, Gina? But of course not! I've been busy, and I? Investigating that. The lads of the yard are trying to trace the boss's movements the day before it happened. The day before? That would be the young undercover investigation into the Red-Headed League, then. Only the boss didn't go, did he? You found some cove water was pretending to be him, didn't you, Otto? Yes, it was Mr. Vigil who actually went to the park on Lime Street that day, posing as Gregson. Well, anyway, you ain't the only one turning stuff up. I've got my own ways of getting results. It's stealing things, and also my dog. <laughs> me and my partner yet again. There's nothing we can't track down. Oh, little Toby. He's such a faithful friend. Aw, he's so happy. Look at him. So, have you tracked anything down, then? What do you think, eh? Of course we have. Can't you tell, though? Police business, in it? Ugh. Anyway, the point is, if you have Lord ever need any help, you know who to turn to, right? Me and the hell out here. Right. Because he looks oh so hellish, honest. <laughs> He's so cute. Tell me about the hellhound. Tell me. Um, Gina, about your hellhound there. Okay, he's come back up again. Here we go. Jeff is meant to tell me, you mean? He's so proud of the force he is. In Japanese, police dog means something quite different and not altogether nice to those involved in crime. <laughs> But here in Britain, it's a wonderful compliment, it seems, for a canine at least. Yeah. It should be, after all, in the great exhibition case the other day, it was Toby here who managed to locate Drubber's workshop. Maybe it's time for another demonstration of what the super dog can do, eh? Just something the chief inspector could catch the scent of, I wonder. Uh, to watch? Well, Chief Inspector Toby, if you wouldn't mind having a sip of this. He might be a little too keen, don't you think? Ah! <laughs> the chief inspector made short work of Gina there. Woof, woof. Ah, look where he's gone to. Oh my, that truck clearly still has a very strong scent of Inspector Gregson. In other words, it must have belonged to him. That's cute. All right, it's a fair cult, I suppose. It's cute. I, so I could have probably shown a few different things to him to get Gregson's scent. And you nearly got away with it, too. You always talk so proudly of Chief Inspector Toby's nose and what it can achieve. Did it not cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us? <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a bloom, I want it. It's enough now, then, Gina. Yeah. I think it's time you told us the truth. About that trunk. The metal trunk. It, it won't like that. You, you just what? What are you talking about? I do 
what's going through that head of yours, but that ain't what happened. All right, then. What did happen? Well, like I said before, we were trying to trace the boss's movements. So I let Toby have a whiff of the boss's of a goat. As soon as I done that, he went off like a shot. Straight to that sandwich. To the sandwich? Not to a bag of chips? <laughs> Mr. Arahoto, I believe Gina means the witness. Mr. Mr. Sandwich. Uh, uh, this guy again? Oh, I forgot about that sandwich. Oh, Lord. Uh, yeah, he had it in between the wooden board of his, the boss's truck. Oh, uh, what, did he take that with him then? Stole it off of him? You mean when they heard the sound like a gunshot and all piled in here? Exactly. A nabbed on the scene. Goodness. Me and the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grilling. And you know what he said? I, I thought it might fetch a good, good price. And the chap wouldn't be needing it anymore, so. But that's all I did. Nothing more. Nothing like Would you add him the jake of it, eh? Stealing the dead boss's stuff to flog. So Miss Venus wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime then. Damn. I thought you were better than that, Mr. Sandwich. How could they? So anyway, that's how it happened. And it's a pretty decent trunk, so I figured I might as well make use of it. Is there something wrong with that? Eh? Well? Maybe you and Mr. Sandwich should try to find the answer to that question together. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Otto. What's in that fucking trunk, Gina? Perhaps the trunk should be turned over to the police, don't you? What are you all about? I am the police. I am the law. Gina, if you wouldn't mind, can I see your fucking truck already? Can we maybe examine it? Yeah, all right then. Do what you want with it. Thank you. We shall make a detailed record of our examination of the evidence. Inspector Rex's metal traveling trunk that was removed from the scene, but subsequently recovered by Gina. Okay. Grr. Wait. I think Holmes is in here. I'm betting. He's probably always growling. Oh, I see blood. Gina, did you not see the giant blood stain on the side of this thing? Ah, well, I don't know. I didn't think it was a board. I just didn't bother to wipe it off. Let's have a look inside. Blood. With this dark stain here, do you think? Yes, I'm afraid so. I think it's blood. Ah, uh, knew you were going to say that. So that presumably means... That this was present at the scene when Inspector Gregson was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. I think Gina's been carrying this around with her. If you didn't know any better, I suppose it does look like a grease stain from all the fish and chips. It's called some fish and chips residue on there. Holy shit, look at this big thing. Have you seen this huge gash across the side of the trunk here? It's gone right through the leather and into the metal behind it. Gosh, for a metal chest like this to have been so badly damaged. Whatever made the gash was to struck the, the side of the truck with considerable force. wonder how it happened. <laughs> what is that? Look, there's something inside. Ooh, let's see. It appears to be a passport, authorizing him to travel overseas. Was Inspector Gregson about to go on a trip abroad then? Well, he was, right? He was heading to France. Perhaps the day of departure might tell us something. That was... Oh! What is it? It was for <sighs> travel on October 31st, just one day before the incident. What? Really? Um, passport document that was in Inspector Gregson's possession was issued for, yeah, travel to France the day before his body was discovered. Hmm, were they trying to get to him before he left, maybe? Gregson went to France the day before his body was discovered? Hmm. I'm surprised the, the gash of the blood didn't seem to get added to my, my thing here. Uh, name Tobias Gregson, passport number, hooly doodly, date of departure within one week from the 31st. Uh, destination port of Dunkirk, France. Purpose of travel, police business, no notes. Permission for the applicant and one additional person to travel. Oh, is he planning, is that why he's planning to bring Gina with him? Hmm. All right, girl. What's the matter with Toby? Why is he acting so aggressively towards me all of a sudden? <gasps> Mr. Arhoda, be careful. It must be the trunk. Uh, oh, God! Uh, 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 uh! He's not licking my face, Jenny! He's biting it! Oh my god! Mr. Arhoto! Mr. Arhoto! Gina, quickly! Hail a carriage! All 
Naruhodo got his face completely licked off that day. Uh, November 2nd, 4.57 p.m. Naruhodo's legal consultancy. What the heck? And I'm back here again? I died that day. Oh, wait. No, I'm still here. Oh, Mr. Naruhodo, are you all right? I'm still over here by your bedside crying for hours. Miss Suzuto, what happened? Oh, God. Oh, coach again at last. A blessed relief, my dear fellow. Oh, I thought you were going to show up there and we're going to do your dance of hoodly doodly. We're not doing it this time? After all, it's dropped dead after a moderate licking by a small terrier. Looks unseemly. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I love his crazy fall anima uh, animation. What is or isn't seemingly, seemingly is irrelevant here, Mr. Holmes. I'm so glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Did you bring me back here? I did. I slung your dead, lifeless body right over my shoulder and Suzu tossed you right back to the Narahodo Legal Agency. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, what's this on my head? A, a bandage? Sadly, we had no ice, so that's the compress of sugar water. Sugar water? Why can't I taste it from the inside of my brain? Don't worry, Mr. Naruto. It's the first aid treatment that my father taught me. Oh, thank you. So let's take tea when you're feeling up to it. But of course, no sugar in the patient's cup. Ugh, the bump of my head is throbbing sweetly enough. Don't worry. E. Whenever you feel ready, then. Hey, look at this. <laughs> I would like to mend that for you the other day, Miss Naruhodo. Thank you. You did a really seamless job. Did we already have this conversation? I can't remember. You're very welcome. It's all a day's work for your judicial assistant. I see dropped in Thames River now. It rather... Oh, no, yeah, I did. And I said that, and I ruined everything. All right. Just making sure. All right. Anyway. Wait, do I talk to you or... No. All right. Holmes, what are you doing? Hello there. I'm over here smoking my pipe. Um, thank you for your concern, Mr. Holmes. My dear fellow, think nothing of it. I must say I was quite startled when I heard that you'd been attacked by a dog. For a moment, I feared that infamous murderer of so many had come back from the dead. You mean the professor? Oh, that's right. I almost forgot that he's, he was killing people with his dog. Fortunately, I see your prized throat is unscathed. That stiff turned up collar of yours obviously afforded some welcome protection. Was I that close to death? That little terrier? No, he wasn't biting you. He loved you. All I re really remember is the dog licking my face over and over and over again. Well, if you wish to avoid such troubles in future, a little mustard spread on the cheeks should do the trick. I should think that would balance the sweetness of your bandage rather splendidly. Thanks. What am I doing? What am I doing back here? Just leave? Uh, I'm so relieved that you're alright. Have some tea and relax for a while. Okay. Is Iris back here? Can we talk about stuff? Uh, November 2nd, home sweet. <laughs> it was kind of a funny transition. I was like, I'm just suddenly back here again. All right, well, we're not done yet. <laughs> what in the fuck is going on here? This is a, it, a interesting, <laughs> interesting scene. <laughs> Professor Mikotoba's here, and he's lying there, and he's got like a weird blanket over him, and for some reason, a Sogi's mask, and a vase fell over, and, just, and Iris is there, and she's sad. What on earth is going on in here? Am I having a bad dream? Am I coming down, bro? Ah, uh, no, it's an old German folk song. Rather a fine rendition, I think. That's the least of my concerns. Um, Iris. She's sad. Iris, what's the matter? Um, who is that sprawling, I mean, that relaxed gentleman over there? It's your daddy. Iris, um, is he even listening? Excuse me, sir. I do apologize for troubling your, you whilst you're singing so merrily, but would you be kind enough to explain the situation? Well, that worked. 
A grinning gentleman and a mute young girl. A rather tantalizing juxtaposition. And one that appears to have incited the gods of deduction within me to find the voices too. Ah, Mr. Holmes, do you mean? Wait, really? We're doing this now? The strains of reasoning within me are playing now as a delightful duet. One melody sings of a reunion full of nostalgia. <gasps> Iris, what have you done? What's the other? It's a morose theme about the great secrets you're trying to so desperately to conceal. Iris. She's turned as wise as sheet. Uh-oh. Isn't that just Professor Minkatoba? Right? Don't you recognize your dad? Susano? So as usual, you've instantly seen, seen to the very heart of the matter. Right? Should that be like super obviously her dad? He had a hat on, right? Hold on a second. Wait a demon minute. Yeah, it's just him. Look, it's this hat too. It, I don't know, whatever. By the time my own brief performance is over, I feel sure this gentleman's song will reach its finale. So then, to musical land, where all is sweetness and delicacy and harmony. Pray do enjoy Sherlock Holmes' latest logic and reasoning spectacular. Okay, I definitely wasn't expecting it for whatever the hell's going on here, but... Okay, the game is full, guys. The man's identity. First, we consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly, he's a German with no grasp of the English language. As evidenced by the dramatic song, he sings in his apparently an inability to understand when asked to desist. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Obviously, he's, just, he's, he's very good at ventriloquism. So, why is the man here at all? It is such apparently high spirits. The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you. Indeed, we only need to follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particularly particular part of this mystery. The reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is real by the, the herbal tea. You obviously offered our German guest a cup of your latest herbal blend. The tea's de delectable flavor has made the man's spirit soar and resulted in this joy joyful ditty tumbling incessantly from his lips. I eagerly await sampling the flavor myself that I may join the fellow in a state of elation. <laughs> yeah. Now to the next question. Who exactly is the gentleman availing himself so thoroughly of the settee? As happens a number of years ago now, a certain gentleman of German origin engaged my services in solving a particularly delicate case. He required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proved problematic. In order to conceal his noble identity, he also arrived at my office in a mask. The gentleman's name was Wilhelm Gostreich Sigismund von Ormstein. Isn't that the name of the kid that we saw before? The King of Germany. In my, my mem if my memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question. The mask belongs to the King of Germany. Ah, if I can do it, that makes so much sense. Absolutely isn't the mask that was been sitting here for the past few days. So, I like how Mika Suso is going to like, Dad? <laughs> like, seriously? Is it really that hard to tell us him? It would appear that his majesty remembers the fine service I afforded him. And has decided to show his face again, mask and all, in order to express his gratitude. A well-mannered monarch, indeed. Would you agree, my dear fellow? So the identity of this mass visitor is, in fact, my former client, the King of Germany. Indeed, his son is currently in London as well, enjoying the wonders of the Great Exhibition. Oh, I was saying the father of that kid. Gotcha. God damn, it makes so much dumb demon sense, the King of Germany. Oh, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. All right. Girl, silence. Do -do 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 -do. Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you, young Iris. But your apparently inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. She like hurt her mouth or something? I thought she was just doing her weird little puffy face or something, but she almost looks like she's like, like bites something and her teeth hurt. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside the knapsack. That knapsack. A five pound note, I believe. I must say as your compatriot, I'm deeply sad. It would appear that you've allowed yourself to be bribed into silence by his royal highness. <laughs> Earning yourself some spending money in exchange for keeping quiet about the king's secret. God, makes so much sense. Mm. 
sitting there. No, she's literally... She, she does actually seem like she's unable to talk. And now, the final piece of the puzzle. What is the secret you strive to hide with your silence, Iris? Ah, yes. We need only follow that brief, involuntary twitch of your eyes to find the answer. You are tempted to score with that coffee cup. I fucking knew it. My favorite coffee cup, in fact. Or should I say, the handle of my favorite coffee cup. It appears that his high-spirited highness broke it in the midst of his hygiene. <laughs> Which leads us to the sad truth. My favorite coffee cup has been broken by the king of Germany. And Iris, you tried to conceal it from me? How dare you? I shall have a bill sent via government channels to the German royal family for his replacement. <laughs> I'm sad now. <gasps> Too high, the coffee cup. Oh my god, it all came together so beautifully. This makes so much sense. This concludes Sherlock Holmes' great deduction of this painful puzzle. Blah, 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 blah. With your silence as well, the fellow's jovial warbling rather rings in the ears, does it not? Ha! Uh, um, Mr. Holmes, I must say something does rather trouble me. Pray, Mrs. Toad, do tell. I feel like I was really on the, on the money this time. His Royal Highness doesn't appear to have moved a muscle since we arrived. Ah, and you haven't said a word. You haven't said a word either, Iris. If Mr. Holmes has has it all right, you might as well own up to it now. Your reasoning is entirely without substance, I must admit. And one other thing, Mr. Holmes. Yet another grievance, Mr. Arahodo. Surely not. Well, I actually read the story of that case recently. The one you were just describing. And according to that, at least, it wasn't the king of Germany. It was the king of Bohemia. Goodness, was it? <laughs> yes, that's quite true. Master Gotts, the prince, testified that in court. In his words, I have come to see the great exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. Bohemia, Germany, you know, same thing. I would ask you to keep that minor error to yourselves. It could easily become quite a scandal. I believe, Mr. Hodo, that it's our turn to, to, to now to make some corrections to a number of minor errors that may have slipped in. Yes, even Mr. Holmes is willing to admit he might be slightly wide of the mark this time. Although it's clear that Iris is definitely hiding something. We need to find out the truth behind this mysterious scene. But one truth is incontrovertible. My favorite coffee cup is no more. So shall we mark again on a joint presentation of Sherlock Holmes' logic and racing spectacular? No! Hold it, Mr. Holmes! You shut your dumb face! Here we go! Alright, I'm just gonna skip this first part, alright? We've done this shit enough times, alright? Blah, 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 yes. Those we can say this man who's clearly German and not fucking Susto's dad. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, it's some mix of herbs that gives you the urge to sing? Goodness. I should like to try some. I'd like to hear your singing, but this man... But, but this man, just how long does he intend to keep up with that tune, do you suppose? As I said, he's been stuck still the entire time. If you look closely, his lips aren't moving either. Ah. So I'm not sure what is actually responsible for this by spirited singing. But I suspect the answer lies at the end of Iris' gaze. I kind of figured it was this. Wait, this... It's a gramophone. So rarely seen in our own country. The sound certainly appears to be coming from the horn. But when she's singing, that, that can't be right. Science and technology are changing the world rapidly, Mr. Naruhoto. What's right is changing too. Ah, uh, it's too much for my brain. Well, at least we found our answer. Take that! Uh, the reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the gramophone. Indeed, for no well-bred gentleman would break into an obscure folk song when making a social call. <laughs> it makes so much sense. Glad I thought of it. In other words, this gentleman isn't singing at all. In fact, 
it would appear that the fellow is unconscious. Turn that fucking song up. Ah, uh, music seems to have stopped now. Got a thing went on for a while. That was a long song. I ask you, Mr. Arahodo. Yes? Why would I have purchased a recording of that gibberish? <laughs> How should I know? Anyway, well, never mind, all with the deduction. <laughs> Who exactly is this gentleman unveiling himself so thoroughly at the city? Happened, happened so many years ago now. A certain German gentleman came back and he was like, hey, buggity, buggity, buggity. Buggity, 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 buggity. Right, we're just gonna stick with that. It's the king of Germany. Yep, <laughs> that, that, this didn't change at all. It seems like Iris' mouth is messed up or something. Although we've already established it was actually the king of Bohemia. Sees Mr. Holmes attempts to persist with his German theory for some reason. Come to think of it, the young prince was wearing a mask as well, wasn't he? Master Gotts, the boy whom you had, had in tears. Don't remind me or anyone else. Do you suppose all members of the aristocracy of mainland Europe wear, wear masks? Or do you, do you spy the guy said that? I'm sure they do. Well, probably anyway. The point is, that mask doesn't belong to any king. No, that's right. As we well know. Because we can identify the true owner of this mask. Yes, it was you. You. Bonk. <laughs> this is a goofy this is a goofy one. This is like one you like immediately already know the answers to anyway. Yes, there can be no question that the mask belongs to Cosmo Sogi. In other words, my memory is sublimely unreliable. <laughs> Only you could try to make that sound positive. Cosmo's mask has been languishing on this metal chest for several days, you dumbass. I've been looking at I've been looking at it a number of times too. That doesn't explain why the gentleman is wearing it now. Also the broken face on the floor. But it is now a simple matter to determine our guest's true identity. After all, the gentleman is unconscious. We'd only excuse ourselves in advance. Gently lift the mask and peer beneath it. Who could it possibly be, I wonder? <gasps> My God, it's... Fuck it. Who is that man? I don't know, I've never seen before. I, I don't believe it. Uh, father! F father! <laughs> I can't believe she didn't figure it out at the beginning. I'm afraid Mr. Sogi... No! I think not, Mr. Holmes. <gasps> oh, shit. Wait, wait, what's it? I'm afraid, Mr. Sogi, you must be mistaken. I'm afraid not, Mr. Holmes! Then it would appear our logic and reasoning has once again revealed the truth. This mysterious visitor... <laughs> ...is my unconscious father. Yujin Mikotoba! Hmm! Logic and reasoning? Or just looking and saying? <laughs> Uh, we're taking a picture of this for some reason. You should make a toba. God damn it. That also makes so much sense. Okay, and back we go. Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you young Iris. But your apparently inexplicable science is unable to hide the truth. Reason for your muteness is the knapsack. Or not. So that's a five pound note poking out from our snapsack, is it? Oh dear, I can't be sure. Most money that we encounter is in coin form. I know, I'm not even sure if we've seen any banknotes here in Britain at all, have we? But anyway, father would never have paid money for your Iris's silence. He certainly seems like the silent type himself though, judging by his present state. There must be some other reason for Iris's silence, I suppose. Perhaps what Iris is trying so hard not to give away with their eyes. It's something entirely different. Did it, did it, did it. Metal chest? The metal chest contains important documents, doesn't it? Yes, details of all the cases Mr. Holmes has worked on over the years. Written up by Iris' father, if I'm remembering correctly. Iris insists that the chest is kept locked at all time locked at all times. She never wants to show me inside. Well, its contents are invaluable to her, I suppose. Entirely irreplaceable. But look at it now. The catch is unlocked for once. Ah, so it is. That's hard to ignore. Very. I've never seen that chest unlocked before. And all the time time we've been staying here at Baker Street. Take that! Uh, boom! <laughs> 
yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that metal chest. In excellent observation, for upon closer inspection, there's something different about the chest's appearance. It's kept locked at all times, yet now, the catch is open. Evidently, this has something to do with your refusal to speak, Iris. Mm. Was a simple enough matter to incite you to speak, I'm sure. I merely need to open this chest. Now, behold. Here we go. He's fucking dead in the exact position as the as her father. So he op tried to open the chest and that fuck, fucked him up. And now he opened the chest and he got fucked up. Well, I guess that explains that. <laughs> he, he's dead. <laughs> Never. No, he's fucking dead. Oh, Holmesy, I told you not to open it. Oh, is that right? Okay, I thought you were something, had something in your mouth, Iris. Like you bit your tongue or something. Ah, uh, so you found your voice now, Iris. Ah! In other words, what just happened clearly reveals the truth here. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is... <laughs> I like it. We can't even continue the deduction anymore because Holmes is dead. It's somewhat different to the usual dance of deduction you perform with Mr. Holmes, isn't it? We gotta break the mold sometime. Well, it's not me alone in the ballroom floor, so I'm gonna have to dance this next part solo. And anyway, I need to get to the bottom of this for my own peace of mind. Now then, ours isn't usually the silent type, so... You mean you don't actually know the answer yet? Despite that knowing, knowing point of the finger before. Miss Suzuto, so does a man needs to point his finger first and think later? Oh, well, if you say so. I think we better examine Iris more closely. Try to rescue the situation, then. Dude, dude, I'm looking at you, Iris. I see you. You got your funny knapsack and... Oh, there's a key. You opened it. That's the key she's holding. Look. I'm sure that wasn't in her hands before, was it? No, you're quite right. It appear it's appeared as if by magic. That's strange. A big old iron key. Where did it materialize from? Woo! Eh, bonk. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is that key behind your back. Ah! Mr. Holmes was thrown to the air before. Let's see it again, just in case we forgot. No! Just before you called out to try to stop him, you slipped something out of your mouth. Oh, it was, oh, it was in her mouth. Okay, I see. Uh, okay, I see. That something is the key now in your hands, no doubt. The key to the chest. I see. You're so, you're so clever, Bruno. So now it's become clear, thanks to Mr. Holmes's graphic demonstration and, and him giving his life, we can now well imagine what happened here. B but Professor Mikitoba also opened that metal chest, only to be punched right into the air, right in the gonads, and landed sprawling on the settee. Why does he have a cup in his hand then? Oh, I guess he was, was he holding it in his hand when he got launched? But wait, that doesn't explain all the facts. What about the stylish scarf? And the cup of tea? Yeah. And above all... The broken vase? Why would he be wearing Cosmo Sama's mask? Well, for those curious details, I can think of only one explanation. Clearly, an unbelievable miracle took place in this room. Isn't that right, Iris? <gasps> wow! See how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. Okay, it's at the br the br other the other cup is broken for for that reason. I see. It's gonna launched off, and he just happened to fly in the air. Have that shit just land right on him. When Professor Mikitoba opened the chest, completely unaware of what awaited him inside, the mask was flung into the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face when it fell back down. And the teacup's journey through the air ended when it caught on the unconscious professor's finger. Uh. You mean to say that the stylish scarf is actually just a tablecloth? This is the great detective's office, after all. I played some miraculous deductions. I gotta dance with somebody, right? Susano, get up here. Here we go. You ready, Susano? <laughs> Would you expect anything less? 
I like she looks surprised, but then she still sp spun with me. Wee! Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as you said. Brilliant, Bruno! Oh, so you probably should go wash your mouth after you had that dirty ass key in there for a while. Uh, that thus includes Rinosuke Naruhoto's great deduction of this punchy puzzle. Go me. So then, why don't I make a fresh pot of tea for all of us? <gasps> objection! Objection! I'm here now, and I said objection. I had a voice line for that. Isn't that cool? In admirable performance, Mr. Naruhoto. But in the final act of the show there, you rather miss everything of importance. <laughs> Mr. Holmes! No, my God! How are you not dead? If you would cast your mind back to my earlier deduction. I was clearly you're hiding a great secret. Ah! Uh. She is? From the look on her face. Oh. Oh. Mr. Holmes must be right. Wherever that great secret is, the cat isn't out of the bag yet. No, okay. His favorite cup did break. It got, it got broken when it got launched. So I put it to you again. You were attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. Really is a shame about Mr. Holmes's cup. It must have been smashed when Professor Mikotope opened the chest. Oh dear, so many things seem to have been broken here. But now that deduction has taken a different direction. Iris doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other words, her great secret is something else. Let's put our observational skills to work one final time then. Oh. Wait. <gasps> Case file. Ah, look. There. There seems to be more papers there. So Iris is trying to hide them underneath the tray. The, the insignia, Mr. Arahoto. It's an official Scotland Yard document. What? But why would Iris have? We must ask her. Official Scotland Yard document. Take this. Take that. You were attempting to abscond with that case file. Iris, as you know very well, nothing escapes the attention of a great detective. Oh no! Or me. Oh, uh, we visited Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory earlier today. And Dr. Corey informed us that the autopsy report of Clint Van Zeeks had gone missing. Van Zeeks. Hmm. Yes, I do seem to recall that some years ago I asked to see the report in question. You were with me, weren't you, Iris? Well, you were like seven back then. I, I... You mean it was you, Iris? So those papers you have there are... I'm sorry. Iris, what have you done? Uh-oh. Aw, almost better to cry. It's not good. What happened? What are you, what you doing, Iris? All right, strike a pose. Charlie's Angel style. Elementary money in honor. In truth, I would like to have thought I could have predicted the booby trap chest, but it caught me completely off guard. I was very neatly the late consulting detective, Sherlock Holmes. I managed to survive, unlike your father, <laughs> Susan Doe. Uh, I'm sorry, Holmesy. So you mean this autopsy report really is? Yes, I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I'd been looking for. When I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it, I knew it was Daddy's. The, the writing? Your father's writing. What do you really mean? Aw. Iris? Must be something that's hard for her to talk about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellows. Mr. Holmes, what is it? We should probably find some way to dispose of this rotting corpse here. I feel as though the poor unconscious, unconscious gentleman on the settee has been somewhat forgotten. 
Ah, father! Perhaps we should find our guest somewhere more peaceful to rest. Nah, he's fine there. Mr. Arahodo! Yes? Would you be so kind to lend him your bed? Must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh, yes, of course. I'll help you carry him up. So will I. Ah, oh, daddy! <laughs> he just picks him up and tosses his ass up there. No, no, I can manage alone, thank you. You have tea to enjoy. We wouldn't want Iris's brew to stew. What's Mr. What is Professor Mikotopi even doing here? I guess he just got invited to have tea and stuff, but then why was the... What happened with him getting punched in the face? <laughs> or punched in the dick and then launched in the air? Just happened to open it while she was there? Or she... Maybe she'd already... She, that's where she stored the autopsy report, right? So then what? He was just like, Oh, what are you doing over there? Hmm, let me check here. Ah, or something. Because there's no better way to make the professor comfortable than dragging him upstairs like a trunk. I wonder. Perhaps it was deliberate. Mr. Holmes is making himself scarce to give Iris the chance to talk more freely. We must use this opportunity to talk with Iris. And find out what's going on. She big sad. Your daddy! Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I told you before, didn't I? That daddy used to be Holmesy's partner. Yes. And that notes about all the case the cases they solved together are kept inside that metal chest. That's right. Holmesy told me, you see. He said that daddy's somewhere far away now, so we can't meet. That's one way of describing it. Then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture of a picture in my head of what daddy must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl of your age. I read that daddy was a professor in medical science, so I studied and took my degree too. Well, that's only natural, I suppose. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. But there was one thing that I could never find out. Daddy's name. Ah. His name wasn't anywhere on any of the notes that he'd made up at his work with Holmesy. But then one day... That's what happened, is it? When he saw this autopsy report, he finally managed to work it out. Is that right? Yes. So it was the handwriting in the report that caught her eye. Ah. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. I know the handwriting. I thought to myself. Because it was the same as the writing you see on your father's case notes. Exactly. I was desperate to compare the two properly. I need, I need to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report away. And even worse, I was told that was the first and last time we'd be allowed even to look at it there. So you decided to steal it. Ah. When I compared the autopsy report with the case notes I had here, there was no doubt the handwriting was exactly the same. It was Daddy's. In the signature of the corner at the bottom of the autopsy report. Read Dr. John H. Watson. So that's how I finally found out. I learned Daddy's name at last. I see. Ever since then, I've called myself Iris Watson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea of writing stories all about Daddy's exciting times with Hol Holmesy. I started there and then that I'd write the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Ah. Uh. Oh, Iris. I had no idea that the stories had quite such a deep personal significance for you. I can see why the autopsy report was so important to her now and why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on it. Aw. Um, I must apologize, Iris. This is really all my fault. Holmesy? I made a promise, you see, that until the time was right, I'd keep the details about your father a secret. I know. I've been very naughty. I'll take the autopsy report back to 
just have to go in and apologize. I promise. Yes. We'll go together, I think. Then, let me look after it for you until we get there. Clint's autopsy report. The autopsy report of the final victim of the infamous professor. The report was authored by Dr. John H. Watson. Mm. Makes you wonder then, was that why he had to die? Watson had to die because he knew something. He saw what the report was. The, re the autopsy report was performed by him. Let's see what it says. Clint Van Zeek's uh, male, age 33, nationality British. Uh, time of death, the May 31st between 9 p.m. and midnight. Observations. Death from a single stab wound to the heart. Other superficial external wounds indicative of a duel. Additional notes. Recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and ring fingers of the right hand, but no document and corresponding ink was found. Scarlet ink stains. Autopsy findings. Vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy. Credited Inspector Gregson for petitioning so doggedly for the autopsy procedure. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. Vital evidence recovered from the stomach, huh? That's interesting. So they're saying... I'm guessing there must have been some kind of poison in there. Um, may maybe that somehow that somehow is what tied to fucking uh, Genshin Asogi. But he had superficial external wounds indicative of a duel. Hmm. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell from right from the get go. It didn't actually say what the vital evidence is. I must go water my herbs. I think. Oh. I'll see you all later. Poor Iris. She must be feeling awful. I know Mr. Holmes is here for her, but still. Ah! What? How? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Holmes? Mr. Holmes? Oh, dear me. So, you've noticed, I see. But that, that would mean... What on earth's the matter, Miss Suzuto? Turn as wide as a sheet. It's this autopsy report, Mr. Arhoto. The one from 10 years ago. The writing. Isn't Dr. Watson's at all. Huh? What do you mean? How could you possibly know that? Because I know this writing very well. This writing. It's my father's. What? What? Professor Minkatoba's? Indeed, it's true. And now you know. My dear fellows! N no! I don't know anything! What on earth does all of this mean, Mr. Holmes? Because the idea that's slowly forming in my mind is just too extraordinary, extraordinary to believe. Oh my god. Please, you have to explain. First, let me show you my, my attorney. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, God. Now, no, first, I'm going to leave. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No way. So, are they suggesting that his partner was actually Mikatoba all this time? Or that Mikatoba is actually Iris' father? I don't know. There's still a Watson. There's still a Dr. John H. Watson who fucking died and ate shit. So this autopsy report was actually pinned by Professor Mikatoba then. But that makes no sense. It's not possible, surely. Not possible, my dear fellow. Pray, take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right. In some ways, it actually makes a great deal of sense. It, it does? 10 years ago is when father returned to Japan after his extended study tour in Britain. And prior to his return, where was Dr. Mikitoba engaged? Ah, uh, of course. He was an assistant in Dr. Watts' laboratory, learning about forensic science. No, it's not, that's not what it's saying here. It's not. It's just saying that, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. She recognized that as her father's handwriting. I guess, was he just, or she was she just misled? And as an assistant, he would have been aided with the dissection work, making detailed notes, which will be assembled into the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents and put his signature on the document. In other words, 
The only writing of Dr. Watson's in the report would be a signature at the end. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what we're saying. I see. Okay. <laughs> I was like, nah, that's not what we're saying. So Iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean? She saw that and assumed the whole report had been written by Dr. Johnny H. Watson. Which is very understandable, of course. What a complicated situation. It's signed by Dr. Johnny Swaston, who carried out the procedure, though Professor Mikitoba actually pinned the report. Thinking about it, most of what we know about you, Mr. Holmes, comes from the published stories of your exploits. Yes, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, written by Iris. Yep, those stories are a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> and we really have no way of knowing what's fact and what's fiction. Most troubling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably for you too, because I don't think you remember half the shit you've actually done. You're right about that. <laughs> Not troubling for me, because I don't care. <laughs> so what about this supposed partner of yours? Did he really exist or not? Ah, oh, you've come straight to the point, I see. And please come straight to the answer. I believe Iris explained it in one of her installments. He was a trusted comrade and the only person I could truly have called a friend. And did this partner of yours truly make a record of all your cases? Are his notes really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madam. Absolutely. So, where's your partner now? Oh. We rarely meet. You see... He lives on the other side of the world. Oh my God. Oh. Interesting. We're saying that his part, oh. Oh no, maybe it is. Wait, maybe we, it is that. She's saying that she did not know the name of her father. She just knew that it was Holmes's Holmesy's partner, right? So, I think it is, actually. I think this game... I think this game just fucked with us. <laughs> this game played off our, played off our pre preconceived notions of who his partner actually is, right? And which is kind of funny. It's almost meta in how it is, because in the original stories of Sherlock Holmes, yeah, it's it's Dr. Watson, but they're, we're saying that those stories aren't exactly all true. And in reality, his partner is actually Susto's father. But does that mean that Professor Mikotoba is also really the father of Iris? Is that what we're saying? That like John H. Watson actually had nothing to do with Iris at all? Oh my God. That would be something that he was came over, that he, while he was over here, like Susto's father also had an affair or something. Oh my God, now think about it. Oh, how, wait, wait. Oh my God, it's just right, she's 10 years old. Just like 10 years ago. Oh, oh my God. Holy shit. You're, so, you're telling me Mikotoba came in here and planted his seed into somebody and then just straight left. Then 10 years later, that baby's still here. Oh my God. All right, I guess the biggest question is why is her hair pink? But this autopsy report and the records of all your old cases were penned by the same hand. And if the autopsy report was written, though not signed by your famous partner, there would only be only one logical conclusion. Pray impress me. Your partner would have to be Yuzhin Mikotoba. In other words, Masusto's father. Pardon my word, Mr. Narahudu. Yes? That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You are such a dumb dumb. No, get the fuck out of my- You are coming along wonderfully. You have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasp the art of deduction. You, you mean to say? Allow me to introduce you. Hello. To my great friend and partner, Mikatoba. Wow. P Professor Mikatoba? Hi there. Wow, what a twist. That's a cool twist, man. D does this mean that you're the real Dr. Watson? 
No, 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 my dear. I'm still my old self. You should be Katoba, your father. Oh, uh, of course, of course. I'm just, I, I, I'm having a hard time keeping track of all this shit. But I, but I am that baby's father. <laughs> Maybe. This is obviously too much for Susto's son to take in, which if that actually is true, that means Iris is like her half-sibling. I must say, though, how my old friends attained worldwide celebrity as a great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Ah, pray remind me. When was it again, Mikatova? 16 years ago, Holmes. Ah, yes, quite. 16 years ago. 16 years ago! I just arrived from Japan with Shishiro and Genshin. I was in search of lodgings close to the hospital. Some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. But rents are devilishly high at that particular area. That's right. So I decided I needed someone to share lodgings and the, and the expense. And was fortunate enough to be introduced to Holmes, who found himself in a similar situation. I was a callow fellow back then, a mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I was working at the hospital's chemical laboratory at the time, indulging my curiosities for little gain. And the situation of our cohabitation led us to pursuing cases together, you see. Hard to believe, it was a mere six years. We had a great many adventures. But in the last year of Mikotoba's stay in Britain, that most infamous ca ca of cases presented itself. The case with which you've become rather a familiar yourselves, the Professor Killings. After the trial, Seishiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising, pr surprising given the circumstances. So there you have it. And as you know, all the details recorded by my trusted chronicle here remain in that metal chest. This is just amazing. Professor Mikotoba really is Mr. Holmes' famous partner. Father. G goodness, my dear. What a cutting look. Oh, shit. She's thinking that too, right? It's your daughter. I'm very proud to learn that you were the great detective's great partner. But nevertheless, there's another mystery that I really must ask you to explain now. And that is? You know very well what it is. The unresolved matter of Iris' father. Ah, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that one. I should have seen this coming, I suppose. Oh boy. You got some splaining to do. Iris told us that all the notes about the great detective's adventures that are in the metal, that metal chest were written by her father. Isn't that correct, Mr. Holmes? That is indeed what I told young Iris. But if you're Mr. Holmes's partner, father, and you wrote all those case notes, then Iris's father must be you. Ah. Upon my word, Miss Suzuto, you are coming along wonderfully as well. You two have hit upon the method at last. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh, Susan's gonna be pissed, though. You finally grasp the art of deduction. What? What you've always told me, Father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago. And you left me in grandmother's care whilst you embarked on your study tour of Britain. And I've always accepted that. But all this about Iris. Oh, there it is. This is Hassan's cold, ice cold stare. No, now hold on a minute. It, it was very complicated. I mean, it's it's really not what you think. Then perhaps you would like to explain exactly what it is. There it is. Now the ice go from ice cold stare, ice cold to red hot, just for she. No, really, you've got the wrong end of the stick. Home, say something, man. Well, I'm peacing out. Bye. That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. Mr. Holmes, when did you get all dressed up? <laughs> Whilst I don't like to interrupt this exciting exploration of the past, Mikatoba and I have an urgent matter that requires a short excursion. But it's fairly late, Mr. Holmes, and I'm about to throw my dad on the floor. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? My partner and I must pursue our natural enemies. So, get your goat, Mikatoba. The game is afoot. But, but Holmes... 
I really must get used to a full explanation, I think. Ledger, my dear fellow, save that for like case five, all right? We can't solve everything now. It's only case four of the game. Jesus, our carriage away downstairs already. You're right, I better run. You haven't changed one iota, have you? I mean, really. I visit our home after 10 long years. And when I open that chest in a fit of nostalgia, I quite inexplicably pass out. Ha ha ha! I see. And as if that wasn't enough, when I eventually regain consciousness, I'm plunged straight into all this. Wow, what a twist, man. Father, please. Go with Mr. Holmes now, but when you get home, I'm gonna toss your fucking whore ass to the ground! You're gonna fucking die! So stay safe out there, alright? Wouldn't want you to die by anybody else's hands. Oh god, run! Run, Holmes! Ah. I've no doubt that whatever happened, you were acting in everyone's best interest when you fucked that dirty slut! I trust you completely. Suzuto. And sending the great detective and his great partner off on new, renewed adventures together is more than I could have hoped for in my wildest dreams, and it's in my daddy! Very well then. We'll speak again later. So, I believe your own work is done for the day. I don't imagine it's like her her mother was also Iris's mother, right? Said her, her mother died like 16 years ago, right? So she never like questioned it? Unless she's like been here in Japan this whole time and he lied about it for some reason? I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. Yes, Narhodo. Good luck in battle and in reaching a decision. A decision? About whether to go back to Japan, I suppose. What about all this other shit, dude? Fuck all that, right? So much happened that day that I barely knew what to do with myself. <laughs> yeah, really. I, ba I my brain's like, blah, blah, blah. and I still didn't get all the answers because we we can't explain all of it now. It would only be later that I come to realize how, amidst the chaos I'd unleashed, were all the clues I needed to finally unearth the truth, and that all the turmoil was necessary to give me the resolve to see everything through. <gasps> he said it. He said the thing. Resolve. And wait, what? The legendary pair. Wait, 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 what? Wait a minute. Oh, what? Huh? Oh. Okay. Then it just ends the Okay, well never mind. <laughs> now we're now we're in it. It doesn't even say episode five, so it's literally final. Wow. Okay. I was like, normally it's just to be continued if we're just continuing with it. And oh, it's just the end when we actually at the end of the Wow. Well shit. Then we're in that case. I wonder if we only really have a trial left and no more investigation. Wow, and then th in that case, this is more like a case four and case five are like super like tied together, but it probably is a very long trial section. Uh, that, but that just kind of let me believe then that we're actually getting close to probably the end of this series. Holy shit, dude, though. Wow, this game's so fucking good, though. This game's so fucking good. What a cool twist. Damn. Damn, man. Oh, so this actually, this trial is the one, though. The one... For Vanzix is going to be the trial to decide and everything and to figure out everything. It did seem kind of weird to me when I was thinking like, really, Vanzix isn't going to be like the the final trial of the game, like the the trying of Vanzix. That just seemed kind of more like a final trial thing. It was hard to imagine that. Well, I guess we got Vanzix off, and now we're going to go off to some other trial. And you know, <laughs> if Vanzix come back and we do shit, nah, nah. I just it was just kind of weirdly set up that way. I guess I figured, all right, this part went on long enough, so this is <laughs> that was the end of randomly the end of the part four or episode four and now we're gonna move on to the final the final uh, arc damn dude so cool what a cool fucking twist this game is the fucking best dude i'm already gonna say right now dude this game's this game's my favorite ace attorney game <laughs> this game's so good i unless it go i don't think it's gonna shit the bed at the end but if it did i, I think i'd still probably feel like is this game like this is a super cool twist. This is so cool. Just some absolutely just mwah, fucking beautiful 
expertly written dialogue and writing and character and like twists, like so, like twists that don't feel like ass pulls, but feel like they were earned. You know, you're like, fuck, that's so cool. That's such a fucking cool twist. They played our expectations based on our own knowledge of the stories. That's so smart. And that's, that's why up to this point, right? Up to this point, they were actually ju like juggling the idea of like, was that her father or not? Like, I really thought it was just them trying to really like, you know, because it seemed realistic. They might be sort of skeptical about it. But no, they were. They were actually dancing around this truth. Wow. Very cool, man. Well, uh, I can't wait to see how uh, this game concludes with this trial. And I, it looks like it actually it says trial part one and not like, uh, well, yeah, actually, does it normally say that? For, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm just assuming there's probably not any more investigation sections after this. So we might be finishing this in the next few episodes. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this or these episodes. I don't know, man. This is actually kind of a long one. So I might actually have to split this in last investigation up into two parts. But if you did, please leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe if you're not ready to become Picky Penguin. Aboard the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.